guys, Hardler Brief Dan here with another episode of the Unity and Make an RPG series. Today we're going to continue working on our game time manager and working on our event system that I talked about in the last couple videos. Uh, I want to apologize for the delay in videos. I got pretty busy at work and haven't had too much time to create all the videos that I wanted for you guys. Uh, but no fear, there's going to be several that are going to be coming out this week. So let's do a quick review of what we talked about in the last two videos where we have our game time manager. Uh, where when I press play, oh, don't worry about those little mornings. Uh, we have our we're incrementing time, and I can press the space bar and pause it, and press the space bar again to unpause it, and we can set our game time based on this public variable game day length in minutes. And let's go to that script. We can look at it. Oh, let me reload all. And if you see in the script here, we have the on enable method. That's part of Mondo behavior that allows us to when this game object's enabled to start the game clock, and we just set it. Uh, we set the minutes, we convert the minutes to seconds, and then we set we enable the game clock. The enable the game clock method uh, changes a few bools for us and calls a start coroutine that enables or begins and starts uh, the coroutine game clock that we created, which is just a private I, return type IE enumerator game clock. Pretty simple coroutine, but allows us to increment time without being in the update function that we don't want to be in all the time. Uh, so what we're going to be talking about today though is this reset game clock method here. We're going to be moving this or we're going to keep it by itself but we're going to actually have that subscribe to a to an event and that event will be part of the event manager that we're going to start working on now. So let's go back into Unity and we're going to create an empty game object. So go to hierarchy, create, create empty. I'm going to reset it by clicking on the gear, hit reset and we're going to rename it to event manager. Uh, and my only warning for this is that when you create a uh, UI component, let's say we create a canvas, it's going to create an event system. So don't get confused. We have event manager and event system. So you might want to rename it. It's really up to you. The event manager doesn't really matter what it's called. And really, we don't need it to be game object uh, right now, but uh, we're going to make it a game object. So now we're going to add a component, and it's going to be a new script. It's going to be C sharp script, and we're going to title event manager, same as the name of the object. And we're going to open that up into Visual Studio, and we'll talk about what we're going to be doing with it. So let's delete the start and update function because methods, we don't need that. And we're going to talk about what Microsoft defines a delegate as and what Microsoft defines an event as. And then we're going to, uh, or I'm going to try my best to explain uh, what it is. So Microsoft defines a delegate, which is a type. Uh, is a type that represents references to methods with a particular parameter list and return type. So let me type out what a delegate call would be or look like, uh, and then we'll talk about it some more. So we're going to have a public delegate, and this delegate is going to take a reference, represent a type of method. Uh, and re remember, a method uh, is going to look like it's going to have some sort of uh, accessors like public or private. Uh, it's going to have some return type like void uh, or int or float, whatever the method returns. And then it's going to have a name, right? So it's going to be like test method. Uh, and then it's going to have, it can have an argument, right? So in, the, in these parentheses here, you'd add an argument type. So like int a or float b, oh, misspelled float, float b, string a. F, you know, something, it might have an argument. And when you call that method, you need to pass in these arguments to, uh, for it to properly work. And that's basically what you declare on the right side of when you call delegate. You, you're telling the delegate that it's going to represent or reference uh, these types of methods. And the methods that we're going to be using, the type here, is just going to be a return type void, and we're going to just call it end of day. Okay. So this delegate is going to reference or represent just like the definition says, represents references uh, to this type of method, a return type void method, and it takes zero arguments. Now we're going to work on our event, which I'm going to type it out first. It's going to be a public static, meaning we can call it anywhere, uh, in that it's the only instance of it. And we're going to call it, we're going to use the keyword event. Um, and then we're going to use end of day. So we're going to say, hey, this event the only type of methods that can subscribe to this event that we're creating are the type referenced by this delegate, which is the void type. They return nothing and they take zero arguments. And, and then we're going to call it end of day methods. Oh, like that. Okay. So Microsoft again 
uh, defines a method as the event is, keyword is used to declare an event in a publisher class. That you know, reading that without knowing anything about them, you might not understand at all what that means. So let's let's briefly discuss. This is not the best way. This is not the the perfect programmer way to do it or explain it. I'm sure, and so hopefully someone that's watching this video in the comments can maybe provide an even better explanation. Uh, but basically, this event is going to allow us to add listeners or subscribe to this event called end of day methods. Uh, and the way we subscribe to it is we add a method to it. And the method that it's going to take is the type void is this type that we just uh, reference represent by this delegate, which is end of day. Uh, doesn't have to be called end of day, but it has to be a method with a name that takes zero arguments and has a return type of void. Uh, which is the only type of method that can subscribe to this end of day methods event that we created here. Uh, so hopefully you understand that and I'll show you more. We're going to do two examples of how you can subscribe to things and then we'll go on from there. So now we're going to add a public static again method. It's going to be return type void. Uh, you can return, this doesn't have to be set up like this so you can return a boolean if you want. Um, but we're going to have a public static void and we're going to call this reset day. Again, I know this look it's the same format as the as the delegate, but I assure you that it, this can be anything. It can have a return type of int and take an argument. It's up to you. Uh, but in this case, we don't need it. These are separate. Uh, but in this reset day method, we're actually going to call this event. So the way we do that, we just say end of day uh, methods like that. So what we're doing is when you call end of day methods, it's going to call this event is going to call every method that's being added that is added or subscribed to this event end of day methods. So we just have to call this one line of code and thousand methods could be called at once. It's pretty cool. So let's control S to say this is our event manager here. I'm going to actually escape. It's not let me save right now. And I'm going to open that back. Let me go into Unity, open that back up real quick. Um, yep. And we're going to go into our game time manager now, and we're going to get rid of this reset game clock in here. And we're, this is where we're going to call the uh, reset day event. But first, we need to subscribe to it. So on our on enable function in our method here, before we enable the game clock, but after we calculate our seconds, we want to subscribe to this event. And the way we do that is calling the event manager dot end of day methods. And we do the plus equals, so we're adding something to it. And what are we going to add? Well, we're going to add the reset day or reset game clock method. So, excuse me, just copy the name of it, come up to the top. You can control V to paste it and put your semicolon. So, what we just did here is when we enable this game object, we're going to we're going to reset our game clock. This method is going to subscribe to the end of day methods event. And when we call this event later using that reset day public static method it's going to call this game clock so when you usually it's good when you subscribe to something you always would like you probably want to unsubscribe to it so I'm going to um, copy all this if I can highlight it correctly control C I'm gonna go on disable and after we kill the game clock we want to unsubscribe so you just do a little minus symbol instead of a plus uh, and that is basically gonna unsubscribe our event so when this game clock is not on, we don't need it to be firing when this event is firing. Pretty simple. Uh, just keep that in mind. It's it's. I think it's a good practice. You know, C sharp best practices, I guess, or Unity. I don't know. Unity best practices, whatever you want to call it. It's a good practice to uh, unsubscribe as well. So now that we've done that, let's move. Let's actually call the event, right? So we can get rid of this reset game clock uh, in our in our coroutine. And what instead we're going to call it? We're going to call the event manager, and we're going to call the reset day me method, right? So let's control save and let's go into our event manager and talk about what we just did. So we added that method. Uh, we added the um, reset game clock method to this event. We subscribe to the event called end of day methods, uh, and then we. When the day is over, when our time is up, we are calling the event reset day, or the method, excuse me, reset day, which fires the end of day methods event. So, we can control to save, and uh, let's make this a little more obvious. So, uh, when we call the re game, reset game clock, we want to add a debug 
Actually, you're going to see this debug uh, day is over. I'm just going to add to it and we're going to say event fired day is over. Okay, so we know when this comes up, our game is over. And I'm going to make sure that this game day length is, is set to 10 so we can sit for 10 seconds instead of a whole minute for testing. So let's go into Unity now and let me go to the game time manager, set that to 1 so we have 10 second game day length. And clear the console, press play, and hopefully at 10 seconds we should see that event fired. If we did everything correctly. Yep, event fired, game day is over. So we fired that event. Now you might be asking yourself, hey, this is dumb. We just added way more code for, for doing the same exact thing. You know, you don't see why this could be useful. And that's what we're going to talk about now. And then we're going to add, in the next video, we're going to add more functionality to it. So let's create a basic test script, we'll call it. So in your project folder, create a new C-sharp script. We'll call it test script. And this is just going to show you how you can really use this event manager to your, to your liking. So let's open this up. We're going to control us to save and have all this ready. In our, st we're going to create a method first. Uh, it's going to be private, and it's going to turn type void, and it's going to be called test method. Okay, and in here we're going to do debug log. Uh, we're doing a log warning, and we're going to say event fired in the test script. And this is just so you know that this event is working in another script. And now what we need to do is to subscribe to it. So we'll just subscribe to it in our start uh, method here. So we'll do event manager dot uh, end of day methods, and we're going to add it. So plus equals, and we're going to add the test method. Remember, test method has to be the same type as that delegate, right? So it returns void, and it takes zero arguments. You can see if I added an int a here, it won't work causes an error because it only accepts a certain type of a, of a method, right? So it takes zero arguments. We'll reset that back, add that. Now when that event's called, we should see this log warning. It says event fired in the test script. So let's go into Unity. I'm going to press play again. One, two, it's going to count all the way up to ten. Let me clear the log just so we can see it. Five, nine, and ten. So boom. Game day is over, event is fired, and our warning didn't fire. So we had a problem. Let's figure out what we did wrong. Oh, ha. I never, one, I didn't control, uh, it's not saving. You guys are thinking I'm lying to you. <laughs> okay, let's open that back up. Uh, we need to add it to a game object, so let's add it to our main camera here. Oh, let me actually unpause all that. Uh, add our main camera here. So we have, the, we have it attached. Let me remove this other one. We attached the script to the camera now. So on start, it's going to add itself. It's going to subscribe to that event. Let me press play, and let's. It should work totally now. <laughs> Four, five, six. It's counting. Eight, nine, and at ten, it's going to reset. Boom. So the event fired in a di in a different script, right? So we just called two methods using one line of code, basically, uh, which is basically one line of code. One call we called multiple methods, which is pretty cool. So this is the way, if this was an enemy script, maybe an enemy manager you could call it, uh, and you want to reset all your enemy's position, you could have a method that resets enemy position that subscribes to this end of day methods event that fires at the same time. Uh, so that's this video for now. We're going to add some more functionality in, in the next couple videos. So uh, hopefully you learned something. Uh, appreciate it. If you like, subscribe the video. Tell, uh, tell, pass it on to your family and friends uh, if they're trying to get into game development. Uh, it all is super helpful to the, to the channel. Uh, but anyways, I'll talk to you guys next time.